Greetings everyone, Fru here. Welcome. In today's demo, we're going to look at NLP Cloud. We're going to see what it is, and we're going to go in and do some demos, including writing some Python code to interact with the API. What is NLP Cloud? NLP Cloud is an advanced artificial intelligence API for natural language processing. Typically, you would see this in the same circles as GPT-3 from OpenAI. This article goes through the differences if you're going to compare both. And we've done demos on GPT-3 before on the channel. So check those out. But essentially, the key difference, as is called out by the team here, is the approaches they take. So they seem to take different strategies. According to this article, OpenAI has one in-house model, which is GPT-3. And the Cloud is a collection of different best-in-class open source AI models. Here you can see GPT-J, which is a competitor to GPT-3, GPT-Neo, as well as Bad, Spacey, Distilled Bird, and uh, a few others. So just to give you a context in terms of the differences, if you're very interested in that, I highly recommend you read those differences. To access NLP Cloud, you're going to come in and log in. Once you come in, don't bother copying this API token as I'm going to replace it right after the demo. There is billing and we can go into billing. You can see the plans. There are different plans if you're going to interact with this. Very similar to GPT-3, based on your use cases, I use different plans. Here, if I was going to update the plan, there is a pay-as-you-go, $1 per month minimum. And then after that, it's pay-as-you-go based on the models you use. There is a free plan. And of course, there is a startup plan for $29 and it gives you access to GPT-J, GPT-Neo with 15 requests per minute. There's a full plan as well as large language models, which is a flat 500 or so per month. So check out and pick up the plan that works for you. Now going back into a model, there is a playground. The playground does allow you very similar to what you saw in uh, GPT-3 with OpenAI. Uh, you can do classification, your different NLP tasks. You can do dialogue summarization, image generation, which I'm a big fan of. We're going to look at that. Language detection, name entity recognition, as well as sentiment analysis, emotion analysis, and summarization. It does have some interesting capabilities. Just to highlight again, the difference between what you would find here versus on the open AI side is this uses a combination of different models, whereas open AI is one massive model, which is GPT-3 trained on about 170 billion parameters. So let's go into blog post generation. It's using my API token. You can select the model. This is using fast GPT GPT-J, how to become a programmer. And this should generate an article for us. And there you have it. The article is generated, not a lot, but I could keep going if I wanted more. So here, how to become a programmer, advanced studies, while a four-year degree, you can read the details. Now, I'm not going to compare the robustness of the model compared to GPT-3, but with GPT-3, just the UI, I think the UI is a little bit more advanced in my opinion, and the accuracy there seems to be a little bit uh, better, but that's just for basic uh, blog post generation. So let's go into image uh, generation. You can pick the model is using a stable diffusion, which as you can see with code generation, let's go there. It uses a different model. Unlike open AI, where everything is a GPT-3 generalized pre-trained model, this uses different models based on the task at hand. So if I go to name entity recognition, which is very common, this one should be using spacey, so quite a bit of models. I'm not surprised by this. Let's go back to our image generation. There is a default here, an oil painting of a fox in the snow. Wow, that's the result. It does look like a fox to me. And there is a link. You can go ahead and download this uh, using that link. If I open this up, pretty cool. Let's go back into this. The beauty of this also is the ability to leverage the API to interact with this from Python. So I know a lot of you watching this channel, you are Python developers. It's all fine and good generating uh, images and 
content NLP from the web browser, but if you're looking to integrate this into your workflow, into your development pipeline, going through the API would make sense. Here, it does have the sample code, which you can copy and use with Python. So the main thing we need is the NLP cloud package. Let's switch over to Python and see how to work with this. This is my PyCharm environment. I started with this already a few seconds ago. If you are coming into PyCharm, essentially what we need to get this working is the virtual environment you're using. I already have a virtual environment ready to go. Do pip install NLP cloud. That's all you need. I think I have that installed already. It's just going to tell me my environment is ready to go. Once you have that, I'm just going to go through here a simple step to uh, get this going if you're coming at it from Python. So we're just going to import NLP cloud. I'm going to grab my API key. As always, don't bother using this key. I'm just going to delete that right after this demo is uh, complete. <laughs> the next thing we're going to do here is get our client. Once we have the client, I'm passing my NLP uh, key for that. Now we can go ahead and generate the images. I'm going to throw in a prompt for this. My prompt would be lions roller skating in the Times Square of New York. I, th I think that's pretty interesting just to kind of see how well this would, would do. Once we have that, we can go ahead and print the link we get. This will give us a link to the file that's been generated and we can see that. So let's run this. All right, that was completed. We have our image here. If I go ahead and click on that image, hmm, lions roller skating in Times Square, New York. I guess if these are lions, then that will be pretty interesting. Definitely looks like Times Square, a little bit blurry, but nonetheless, pretty interesting. So let's go back and do some more. Let's run it one more time and see if it changes the generation. This looks like uh, a lion face, I guess, still in Times Square. So each time you run, the image uh, generation now uh, changes. All right, let's go back and throw this in a loop with even more prompts. Exactly the same things, but let's look through a couple of prompts. Here, we're just going to go lions roller skating in Times Square, New York. We're going to get uh, programmers sitting in African savannah just to mix things up. A user subscribing to Fruz, let's call this demo, uh, channel. It's just going to iterate through this list and call that API and print out the link. Let's see what we get. The three prompts have been generated. The very first one, again, Alliance, more blurry, still Times Square. Let's look at the uh, programmers uh, sitting in African Savannah. Definitely a Savannah and a programmer. I would have expected a laptop or something to represent the programmer. Okay. Next one, subscribing to the Fruits channel. If this represents subscribing to my channel, but it tried. By the way, guys, if you haven't subscribed, make sure you subscribe to the channel. That's what we have. You can definitely play with this, use different models, change up your prompts. If you have a bunch of images, run it through this and see what you get. I'm doing images, but of course, with this model, you so all the images we've generated. You can generate images. You can do dialogue summarization. You can generate code. Let's see for code. Let's use that. Generate a C++ program that sorts a list. There you go. Generating code. A very interesting. I think the world of um, natural language processing is one of the most active areas as far as AI is concerned. More so than in other spaces. It used to be NLP and think image generation and image manipulation is really picking up. After this, it's going to be videos processing and audios. But this entire space is, uh, is very fascinating. Check it out. I'm a big fan of, of innovation, whether we're looking at the uh, NLP cloud or you're looking at open AI with GPT-3, or you're just going through uh, GPT-J directly or GPT-Neo. It's all very fascinating. Hopefully this gives you some pointers if you're looking to play with this. As always, if you have any questions, don't hesitate to let me know in the comment section below. I'll see what I can do. Thanks for watching. This has been Fru. I'll see you in the next demo. Thank <laughs> you.